What is up, awesome peeps? Brent McCluskey here with Electrified Views, and today we are reviewing the Unirail Fat HD Fat Tire Electric Bike. This thing is awesome, it's fast, it has a huge motor, huge battery, ton of fun to ride. First, let's roll the B-roll. All right, awesome peeps. So again, this is the Unirail Fat HD Fat Tire Electric Bike. Uh, this has been uh, a blast to test, a blast to ride. As you can see, we already got it pretty muddy. We already took it through some trails before we started filming here. This bike does start at $23.99, so it's a, you know, it's not cheap. It's not an affordable bike, in our opinion. At that price point, we're kind of starting to head into the, the mid-tier, even the high-end for electric bikes, so it's, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is, $23.99. However, it does offer a lot of value at that price point. Uh, a couple cool things about the company. Number one, they do offer a seven day return. So if for some reason you pick it up, you don't like it, you can take it back seven days, no problem. Uh, they also offer a two year warranty on this ride, which is pretty sweet. So if something goes wrong, they'll help you out, they'll get it fixed, whatever it takes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but two years, I mean, that's good. You definitely want to have that feeling of security, especially when you're ordering a direct order bike. At the time of filming, the only colors available are gonna be this kind of like, they call it gray, but it looks more like a, like a light black. Uh, they also have kind of like a blue color as well. Um, there's only one frame size. However, I have a feeling that if you talk with this company, they might be able to get different frame sizes and different colors for you. Can't guarantee it, of course, but I have a feeling that these, these guys are a pretty big company. They, they can probably take care of you uh, if you do want that. But again, not 100% sure. They also do offer free shipping on this bike and for all their bikes to the contiguous United States, so the 48 uh, main states there. Uh, they also offer free shipping to Canada and to Australia, which is nice. So that's kind of cool because a lot of times companies will have that price kind of like, you know, at the end of checkout, you know, and you'll be like, okay, $23.99. And then you go to checkout, it's like, oh, 300 bucks for shipping. It's actually $26.99. Um, but that's cool. This, this company actually wraps that price up into the, the, the main price. You, you don't have to pay for anything extra for shipping. Very cool. Definitely dig that. Now let's dive into the specs here because there is a lot to talk about with this bike. First of all, let's go ahead and talk about this this big old buffing <laughs> mid-drive motor here. This thing is a monster. It's a thousand watt motor, awesome peeps. 1,000 watts of power, very, very powerful. 160 newton meters of torque, 160, 160. Just really want to reiterate that because that is extremely torquey. And that makes this motor just sing. I mean, this thing is, it's its really just incredible. It's a very, very good motor. Now, a mid-drive motor offers a, offers a lot of advantages over a hub motor. Number one, look at the placement of this motor. It's right in the middle of the bike, really, really low. It's a good center of gravity, it keeps everything well balanced compared to a hub motor. It's gonna be in the back there um, and it just makes the bike kind of off balance. Definitely dig that. Now, another cool thing about hub motors, it's able to leverage the power or the, uh, the efficiency rather of the rear cassette. So whatever gear you're in, that motor is able to have a mechanical advantage. Just like imagine like when you're pedaling this bike or any bike and you change gears when you're going uphill, right? You want to go into a lower gear um, to make it easier to pedal. Same thing with this motor. It's able to leverage that so it makes it even more powerful. However, if you are in a high, if you're in a high gear, like if you're in top gear, right? And you try to start off from a dead stop, you this motor will, will feel sluggish. Um, and that's just the nature of, or of, uh, of mid-drive motors. And that's because, again, it's leveraging the mechanical advantage of the gear. So just like if you're trying to pedal um, from a dead stop in top gear, it's harder, it's harder to get going. Same thing for this motor, just something to keep in mind. Now, again, with this motor, one of the biggest 
I don't want to say cons, but potential, I guess, dangers of a, of a mid-drive motor is it places a lot of stress on the drivetrain itself. And again, that's because it is connected to the actual, um, you know, to this, uh, to the chain, um, to the chain ring here. And so all that torque, all that power from the motor is going directly into the derailleur when you switch gears. So this bike does have shift detection. So whenever I shift gears, the this motor right here, it's going to like cut power just for a split second while I switch gears. And that's gonna help eliminate some of that stress, that extra stress um, just on the derailleur. However, you know, shift detections, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. So one thing we recommend when you are riding this bike or really any bike with a mid-drive motor is when you switch gears, let off the gas for just a second to kind of save the derailleur. You don't want to be stressing this, this thing too much, right? Now, speaking of derailleur back here, we've got a Shimano Altus derailleur, seven speed. Um, you know, normally we talk about derailleurs and we say, you know, for, for hub motors, they don't matter that much. For mid drives, they definitely matter a lot more. And this, this derailleur is an upgrade from the Shimano Tourney. Um, but again, it's, this is not like an e-bike specific derailleur. So I just want to really hammer that point home of, you know, let off the gas before you switch gears because this motor or this derailleur is an upgrade, um, but it will definitely suffer from wear and tear if you're not careful um, on how you switch gears in this. And I mean, that's just because really a thousand watts, 160 newton meters of torque, it's a lot of power, man. It's a lot of power riding through this, uh, through this system here. <clears throat> Up on the handlebars, we got the Shimano trigger shifters, which is kind of nice. It's not the Shimano SIS index shifter. That big clunky thing is actually trigger shifters, so that's a nice little touch here. The battery on this is going to be a 48 volt system with a stock 15.6 amp hour battery right here. And so for that, for this battery, the stock one, the range is gonna be approximately 40 miles or so. But with, you know, I could always say max range, it's just like with cars, right? You know, they, they say like the, you know, the, you know, the average miles for highway and for, you know, for city, it just depends on how you ride it. If you are in a low pedal assist mode and you're being kind of gentle with the throttle, you can probably get 40 miles pretty easily out of this. However, if you are going really quick, if you're using the throttle a lot, you're going to get a lot less range, you know, obviously. Now what's cool is they do offer a an upgrade battery, a uh, 21 amp hour, and that's going to that's going to give you a lot more range about 30 about 33 percent more about 12 miles more so about 52 miles of range uh, max range for that 21 amp hour battery so that's kind of cool if you are taking this thing like just you know deep deep backwards trails if you want to just really really cruise out there in the mountains or whatever you might want to get that that upgrade battery the battery itself is locking and removable so you can take it out of the frame here and you can charge it separately if you want very nice touch it also does have a USB type A port right here so you can charge accessories on the go, dig that. And right here, if you press this little button, you'll see, hopefully you can see, uh, there's a couple lights right there. It's like a quick indicator for to check the battery. Also, another cool thing, you know, I, we love it when the battery's in the down tube like this because it's it just same thing like the motor, it keeps the weight centered on the bike uh, and it keeps the center of gravity nice and low. It just helps keep the ride characteristics of the bike um, kind of true to what it should be as opposed to having a battery like, you know, on the back there. Sometimes companies do that, which is fine. It just, it just changes the ride characteristics a little bit of the bike. Speaking of the ride characteristics, just the bike overall, the Fat HD is 6061 aluminum alloy, and it's going to weigh in at about 63 pounds, which is not that bad considering that it's a fat tire. It does have fenders, and it does have front suspension. This is going to be RST suspension here in the front, about 100 millimeters of travel, and it's actually pretty good suspension. I, you know, we've 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 really been digging the suspension. It's done a good job of. Um, going through kind of the the muddy stuff this this rocky train you'll kind of see here as we're as you we do the ride portion this is not a great example but there's a lot of now well, you can't even really see here but there are, there was a lot of rocks uh kind of coming up to the spot we'll show you on the ride portion um, the suspension does a good job of handling that it does also have preload adjust right here on the left side and it does have compression adjust and lockout on the right side of the forks uh, respectively to actually riding the bike um, so that's kind of nice because it means I can adjust these suspension on the fly. I can loosen them up. I can stiffen them depending on my weight and how I'm riding it. So, so good stuff there. Now the braking on this bike is going to be Big Tricks is the company name. This is the first time we've tested um, braking from Big Tricks. 
hydraulic braking, which is nice, which is definitely superior to mechanical brakes that offers um, a lot more stopping power compared to mechanical. 160 millimeter rotors in the front and the rear. Honestly, of all the things on this bike, this is my biggest gripe, pretty much the only con I would say of this bike. And because the reality is I just don't think these brakes are powerful enough for this particular bike. And here's why. Yes, the brakes here are gonna be plenty of stopping power if you are just riding on the streets, um, you know, but look, this thing has a top speed of 28 miles per hour with the throttle or 20 miles per hour with the, uh, with the pedal assist. But that, again, the 1000 watt motor, this thing is just really, really powerful. And if you are taking it through mud, and if you get mud, water, gunk, whatever, you know, in these brakes, that's going to reduce the efficiency. So basically, long story short, we would love to see 180 millimeter rotors here, uh, maybe even 203, or maybe like 180 with like quad piston rotors instead of dual piston like these right here. Um, these are dual piston um, brakes right here. So yeah, not a huge deal, but something you might want to consider. Just kind of keep in mind, if you are flying down hills on this, just you know, get used to how quickly you can brake on this bike before you, before you go all out uh, and hit that 28 mile, per hour, 28 mile per hour top speed through tricky terrain, right? Now I mentioned this thing does have fenders. It does come with fenders. It also does come with a rear rack, which really increases the functionality of this bike overall. So like we're saying, this can be used to kind of go deep into the backwoods, or you can even use this as a commuter. You can throw your gear on the back here. Um, it just gives this bike a lot more functionality. And the fenders, I mean, those, those have already come in handy. You can see, like I was talking about, we already got this thing through some mud and the fenders did help keep quite a bit of that mud off of my back um, and off of my bag, you know, way out there in the distance. But yeah, and the cool thing about the, uh, the fenders here and the rear rack, the rear fender and the rear rack, that came pre-installed on the bike when we unboxed it uh, and assembled it. If you do wanna see the unboxing video of this and uh, what it's like to actually put it together, you can check that out on our Instagram TV. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description if you just wanna see, you know, how difficult it is or how long it takes to kind of put this thing together. But really, not difficult to assemble this and that's kind of a huge bonus because sometimes you know it's just it, it's just tricky to assemble some of these bikes especially getting rear racks on for whatever reason they just they don't always fit quite right but again this came pre-assembled so i really do dig that seat post here it is a quick release so you can adjust that on the fly it does have this little rear tail light right here but it's battery operated it's not actually synced into the battery system it also does have a front headlight course if it's a headlight it's always going to be in the front it's kind of like a, a redundancy whatever anyways it's got two leds as as you can see right there uh, the beam pattern on this it's going to be all right you know it's going to increase your visibility which means cars can see you you know from a distance pedestrians can see you from a distance as you're coming but really it's not going to be enough to illuminate your path especially at top speed of 28 miles per hour in the dark so if you guys if you guys want to ride this at night we're going to recommend you know get your own light get an aftermarket light, get something that's really bright, a couple thousand lumens, uh, you know, minimum. Um, that's gonna really help light up that trail for you just so you can ride safely and, you know, kind of have that comfort of uh, being able to see where you're going. Something I forgot to mention or, or really kind of, I guess, touch on is, is you know, with the mid-drive motors, almost with all mid-drives, you're gonna get a torque sensor, uh, which this bike does have. And that's just a beautiful thing to see, um, especially at this price point, uh, $23.99, I mean, it's not that big of a deal for this price point, but I guess, you know, just considering all the other stuff that this does have, it's like there's a lot of like cool upgrades and just some really good components here on this bike, um, which is just kind of surprising to see it at this price point. And I, and I wonder if, you know, because this this bike normally runs for $3,000, um, but right now they're offering it for $23.99. And so, you know, $3,000, this bike kind of makes more sense for the price point. Uh, but yeah, so at $23.99, it's a, I think it's a pretty good deal. But the torque sensors, what's really cool about those is when you start pedaling and stop pedaling, the, the motor cutoff um, and startup is like basically instantaneous. Like as soon as you place torque on these cranks, boom, the motor activates. As soon as you stop pedaling and stop putting torque on the cranks, boom, the motor deactivates. Also what's cool about torque sensors is depending on how hard I pedal is how much juice I get from that motor. You know, so if I'm just pedaling lightly, maybe it'll be like 200 watts of power. If I'm cranking it and I'm going up a hill, it's like, okay, you're putting more, more uh, torque on the cranks and it's gonna unleash that full 1000 watts of power. You just can't get that on a, on a cadence sensor. It's just not how they work, you know? Cadence sensor is just like, 
it's either full on or it's full off, you know, depending on which pedal assist mode you can kind of adjust it, but they're just not as good. So torque sensor, very, very nice touch. Really, really dig that. Wire management on this bike is actually not bad. It's pretty good. Um, they've, you know, they, they've tried to bundle up the cables here a little bit in the front. It would be nice if they were actually able to wrap the entire cables, just keep them really tight, really secure, um, but not a big deal. What I do like about this though, is they are internally routed cables. You can see they feed here into the down tube. Boom, they run all along here. They spit out the bottom down tube, wrap under the motor, um, and that's just kind of, you can see it just kind of follows there. So wire management, I would say, Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Not a lot of complaints there. Oh, you know, man, overall, just this bike, it, it's just, it's a lot of fun to ride, man. The fat tires, you know, we've been testing a lot of fat tire bikes lately, and this is another one, 26 inch by four inch wide fat tires. And there's a reason these things are so trendy lately, and it's because they, they offer a lot of advantages compared to traditional tires. You know, they've got a lot more air volume, so they offer additional suspension uh, properties. They, they kind of make the ride even more cushy. But more than that, they just have a really wide tire patch. There's a lot of surface area that's, that's in contact with the ground um, and it helps disperse the weight um, while you're riding. So again, going over like mud, snow, sand, loose terrain, whatever, these tires really help to float over that. Um, and they have a minimum PSI of like five. So you can really air these things down and get that tire patch even wider and you can just cruise, man. You can cruise over sand, cruise over snow, mud, whatever. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's why fat tires are so dope. Now, fat tires, they do cause a lot of drag and they reduce the efficiency while you're riding because of that tire patch, but the 1,000 watt motor, 160 newton meters, 160 newton meters of torque, that, that's more than enough power to kind of compensate for these fat tires. Also, it's kind of neat. These guys, they do have punched out rims here, which just kind of reduces the weight a little bit. And they also look cool. They got that lime green kind of uh, inner tube there, dig that. And that goes back to that weight, you know, 63 pounds. It's not light, but it's not heavy, man. Like I was expecting this thing to weigh like 80 pounds. So 63, I was I was surprised and, and kind of happy to see that. Up here for, oh, the brakes. One thing I forgot to mention about the brakes is these do have um, motor inhibitors built into the brakes here. So whenever I depress the brake levers, it's gonna instantly cut power to the motor. Uh, and just, that just helps ensure I have the shortest possible stopping distance. Uh, it's nice that it has this, but really it's not even necessary because again, that motor shut off is so quick because it's a torque sensor. So you don't even really need that, but it is nice to have it. Also because these are hydraulic, it means I can adjust the resting position of the levers. I can bring them in like this, or I can let them out. You know, if I have smaller hands, bigger hands, whatever, it just kind of gives you some flexibility there. For the display, kind of a nice little clean display here on the left-hand side. Pretty simple. Button here on the right, it's a long press to turn it on. You'll see it says, hello, like a little like sticky note, whatever. I actually really like the, uh, the layout of this display. It looks kind of like a race car type of, or just like a vehicle, like an actual car or whatever. Dig that. In the middle, we've got the, uh, the current speed. Battery indicator on the right. Something about this bike that I actually I read here in the FAQ section of the company is this electrical system is able to run a 48 volt battery or a 52 volt system. So because of that, there's a little bit of like a, a weird anomaly in the in the display or even when it's if you got a 48 volt battery in here, even when it's full, it's going to say it's at like 85 percent or something. Um, is that a big deal? No, it's kind of like, I don't know, it'd be cool if it didn't, if it wasn't like that. But if you do want to fix it, there are instructions on the website, uh, the Unero website, how to fix that. Uh, it's, you know, if you care about it. Now, anyways, uh, so here's a battery indicator on the right. It's like a 10 bar, kind of cool. Nice little like color, color coded right there. Pedal assist level on the right. To change pedal assist modes, you just hit the up arrow, two, three, four, and five. The throttle here on the left, it is live from zero miles per hour. So if I hit this right now, whoosh, the bike takes off. I really appreciate that. Again, just because like when starting from a stop, it, I don't have to activate it here with the pedal assist. I can just kind of keep my feet on the ground or if I want to spin out or just like change direction, boom, hit the throttle. Very, very, very cool. I think, it goes, I think it goes down to zero if you want to turn it off as well. Yeah. So if you want to turn the electrical system off, boom, put it on zero and you can pedal just like a normal bike. But why would you want to do that? But you can. You also have the current wattage up here on the top left. Kind of hard to read because this is not a huge display. It's a little bit small. I mean, the info is there, which is nice. I like that. Um, and up here, we got the current voltage uh, on the battery, 51.3 volts. So yeah. 
I just want to say it one more time. Overall, this bike is really fun to ride. The 1,000 watt Bafang motor, man, it is cool, especially since it is a mid-drive motor. It just feels like it just feels like unlimited power. And especially when you're going in, when you're in a low gear, if you're going through tricky terrain, if you are going through that mud, I mean, it just, it's just so powerful. It's kind of even hard to put into words. Hopefully we'll be able to show it to you guys um, in the ride portion. So, you know what? I think we have covered this thing pretty much as much as we can. So let's take this thing out for a ride and I will show you this bike in action. Here we go. All right, awesome peeps. That is pretty much it for the review of the Unirail Fat HD Fat Tire Electric Bike. In summary, again, this thing starts for $23.99, which is definitely not in the affordable price point. We're kind of in the upper end, mid-tier to upper end price point here. It's 
little expensive, but it does offer a lot of value for what you are getting. Again, it does come with that thousand watt mid-drive Fang motor with 160 newton meters of torque. That thing is just such a monster of a motor. It does come stock with a 15.6 amp hour battery and it does have the option to upgrade to that 21 amp hour battery, which is nice if you want those big, long extended rides or if you just have a lot of hills in your area. The fat tires do a really good job, as you guys saw, uh, just kind of cruising through the mud. Um, and that's kind of what this thing is really geared for. This bike is going to excel for those people who want to take this on deep backwoods trails. There's lots of mud, difficult terrain, especially this is gonna, this is gonna work really well for sand, for snow, stuff like that but it would work well for a commuter too because it does have the rear rack, it does have the powerful motor if you have a lot of hills or if you just need to go fast. And again, the 28 mile per hour is top speed. That's a pretty quick, pretty quick clip to, uh, to be riding along at. Uh, but overall, it's just a really cool bike, really fun. And I think this does offer a lot of value for that price point of $23.99. Again, the two year warranty. And remember these guys do offer free shipping to the contiguous United States, Canada, and Australia, which is also a huge savings. A lot of times companies kind of, you know, they wrap up that, that price or they, they kind of add it on after. It's like 300 bucks and you didn't really, you didn't really know it until, you, until you're ready to check out. So that's kind of cool that uh, this company does that. So look, awesome peeps. I hope you have a fantastic holiday season. Welcome to 2020 and hope you're having fantastic day. I'll catch you guys next time.